Hello, I'm Dr. James Bogash, expert in health and longevity and creator of Bogash Life and Balance. And as a practicing chiropractor who treats a fair number of patients who have been in car accidents, this particular study really kind of struck home and certainly uh, flies in the face of what you hear from insurance companies who don't want to pay for a rear-end claim when there's been a small amount of property damage. Um, I've had patients who got rear-ended at an ATM. Like, how fast could somebody have been going at an ATM? But they were significantly injured and took some time to recover. And normally, the insurance adjuster would say, well, there's no way there could have been an injury, you know, could have been an injury, and what if you plop down on the chair? It's all the same, and then you don't get injured plopping down on a chair. But we know that that happens. And there's a lot of factors that go into play with that. There are things like pre-existing conditions, if somebody's got arthritis or um, pre-existing neck problems, um, osteoporosis, the age of the patient, male versus female, the size of the patient. There's a lot of stuff that goes into play. Um, so as on one end of the spectrum, I told you I had a patient who got rear-ended in an ATM and another patient that got in a pretty serious car accident and all he had was a finger sprain. So we're talking about a couple weeks worth of treatment. That finger was back to 100%. Well, he was in the back seat. Two people in the front seat didn't survive the collision and the one next to him was still in a rehab hospital in Las Vegas. So clearly whatever happened to him was different than what happened to the other people in the vehicle. So this was a review on what's called Delta V. So the change in in speed between um, between vehicles. So like if somebody's rear-ended and they're at a stop and how fast was the other one going, that difference in the velocities of the vehicles, the Delta V. And so it was a review looking at low impact injuries and whether or not that could cause damage. So they, it was between three and 11 kilometers per hour, which is like 1.6, 1.8, and um, like seven kilometers per hour. So we're looking at pretty small speeds. They reviewed 33 different studies. So this was a meta-analysis looking at a bunch of different studies. They looked at three different scenarios. First of all, volunteer rear impact injuries. So like that sled type injury and seeing how people were, were injured. Um, ADL studies, so activities, activities activities of daily living. So things like sitting, plopping down in a chair, um, uh, going up a set of steps, <coughs> excuse me, jumping, uh, these things that are activities of daily living and, and how much force is exerted on there. And then they looked at real world uh, outcomes from people that had been in accidents. And they found that the um, when they compared the crash tests to these ADLs, like dropping down in a chair, they were at least several times more forced than we had with ADLs. In the real world collisions, you were looking at at oh, in some cases two thousand times greater forces getting rear-ended at a low speed, like getting rear-ended at an ATM versus plopping down in a chair. So when an insurance company tells you that you couldn't possibly have been injured and you know you are, don't take that for granted and don't let that deter you from seeking proper treatment. Obviously, as a chiropractor who lives in this world, I think everybody who's been in an accident should be evaluated, even if it's just once or twice if, they're not feel, if they don't have any symptoms. I think even just once is probably not a bad idea. Just make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. As always, I will post a link to this particular study in the description. Make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs the information, and subscribe to the channel.